Tell yourself while you're meditating here, you're going to make friends with the breath. Because that way, wherever you go, you'll have a friend going with you. Whenever you need a sense of ease, a sense of nourishment, you can just turn to the breath. And if you're on really good terms, the breath will have that energy and nourishment for you. But to be good friends, you have to get to know the other person, and it's the same with the breath. You have to listen to the breath and see what the body wants. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel really good right now? Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and see how the body responds. Does it feel good? If it does, keep it up. But that doesn't mean it's going to feel good all the time, because after all, the body will have enough of that kind of breathing and it will need something else. So you want to keep on top of it, keep watching, keep observant. Because this is how you develop good friends. On the one hand, you spend a lot of time with them, and the other is you have to be very observant. So you really get to know them. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Where are the areas where you can trust them? Where are the areas where you can't trust them? Because not everybody who's friendly and nice on the surface is going to be friendly and nice deep down. Or not everybody who's fun to talk to is going to be someone you can really depend on. In Thai, they talk about having two kinds of friends, the friends that you eat with and the friends that be willing to die for you. The friends you eat with may not necessarily be loyal all the way. So the times when you have to test your friend, ask questions, just kind of notice what they do, what they think. Notice how they treat other people. And gradually, over time, you get a sense of who you can trust and who you can't. And it's the same with the breath. It takes time to really get to know the breath, because the mind gets more quiet, more and more quiet. It begins to see things in the breath that it didn't see before. And you begin to realize it's not just the sensation of the breath in and out of the nose. Sometimes it can be the breath sensation in the chest. As you breathe in, the chest feels one way, and you breathe out, your chest feels another way. Then you begin to realize there's a sense of energy that flows through the whole body each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out. And sometimes it flows nicely, and sometimes it's blocked, because you're tensing up someplace. You may be tensing your arm, you may be tensing your leg, maybe some tension in your back. And so you make a survey and see what you can relax so that the breath can flow in and out every part of the body. And there's a sense of openness all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, even when the breath stops between the in-breath and the out-breath, or between the out-breath and the in-breath. There's still a sense of openness and ease. Because as you listen to the body's needs, as you notice what the body is, then you begin to get a sense of what kind of breathing is going to help with those needs. Then you and the breath become better and better friends. So that as soon as you want that sense of ease, all you have to do is just think about the breath. There it is. It opens things up. It gives you energy when you want energy. helps you relax when you want to relax. And you can pose little questions. What's the breath like in the arm? What's the breath like in the legs? What kind of breathing does the body need right now? Because sometimes you have to read your own body as to whether it's too tired or too energetic. And then you learn how to make adjustments. This way you become friends inside. And as the Buddha said, one of the most important things in life is who your friends are. If you have friends that are greedy and angry and deluded, you begin to pick up some of their habits. It 
of all they see that it's important in the world is money and position and power and wealth, and those are the only people you know, then you're going to start thinking in those ways too, and it's going to be dangerous for you. This is why the Buddha said that he's a good friend to all meditators, because he teaches them the path. Without him teaching us the path, who would have thought to sit down and close your eyes and focus in your breath and it would accomplish anything? And very few people in the world realize that true happiness doesn't come from getting things or having nice friends. It comes from training the mind. I mean, nice things and good friends are good, but your real happiness comes from within. So that's why we work on the breath, so we can have a real friend inside. The mind can be its own friend, because sometimes the mind can be your enemy, thinks up things that are actually going to be bad for you. Yet you think, well, this is my thought, therefore it just means what I want. But what you want is not necessarily always good for you. This is why you have to watch your mind, too, to see when it's a true friend and when it's not. Like that chant we had just now about friends who cheat you. Well, sometimes your mind cheats you. It says, boy, I'd like to do that, and then you do that, and it's going to give you bad results. You end up unhappy as a result, even though your thought would be good. It's a case of the mind cheating you. The mind that's good only in word it promises you'll do something, and then you don't do it. One that flatters and controls. Flattery means just talking about how nice you are all the time. Even when you made a mistake, the mind can say, well, that, that was right, that was okay. You can't trust that kind of mind. It doesn't want to admit its mistakes, and if you don't admit your mistakes, you're never going to learn. And a companion in ruinous fun, the kind of ruinous fun that harms you, harms other people. Sometimes the mind says, well, I'd like to say this or I'd like to do that, and then when you actually do it, Seems like fun at the time, but afterwards you realize oh, you really did hurt somebody. Okay, when the mind is thinking in those ways, it's being your enemy. So you've got to learn how to watch your mind, too. The Buddha once taught his son that whenever you are planning to think about something, ask yourself, well, what's really going to happen as a result? And if you think it's going to harm yourself or harm other people, you just don't do it. If it seems okay, we'll go ahead and try. But while you're doing it, begin to notice, okay, what are the results that are actually coming out right now? And if it turns out that even though you didn't think there'd be any harm, you actually are causing harm either to yourself or to other people, you stop. If you don't see any harm, you keep on acting. Then when the action is done, then you reflect on the long-term results. Did it end up harming anybody? If so, you make up your mind you're not going to do that anymore, and you're going to talk it over to some, with somebody you trust to tell them what you did. Don't be afraid to tell people of your mistakes. But again, you've got to choose somebody you really trust, someone who's wise. Talk it over with that person, you get their advice. This is why being a good parent means that you are willing to listen to your child's mistakes, not jump all over the kid, but point out, okay, this is where it was a mistake, this is where it harms somebody, and this is how you can avoid that mistake the next time around. Okay, Once your trustworthy friend has told you that, then you make up your mind. You're not going to make that mistake ever again. This applies not only to your thoughts, but also to your words, the things you say, the things you do. And it's this way the mind becomes its own best friend. It points you to worthwhile things. It's helpful. So in other words, as you train the mind, you're getting a good friend inside. As you work with the breath, you're getting a good friend inside. And these are the friends that really mean the most. because they'll stay with you until you die. So it's good to spend time with them. 
as I said, it takes time to really be friends with someone. You can't just walk up and say something nice or shake hands and be friends automatically. Yes, some people are friendly in that way, but to be a true friend takes time. And you have to be really observant. You really have to watch. This applies outside and applies inside. So right now we have a whole hour. You take this opportunity to learn how to be really good friends with your breath. And the better you are a friend with the breath, and you find that the breath has a lot more to offer to you as well. 